Right, today's video is one that wasn't planned and it's came from me testing the two clubs that I have to the right of me and seeing data that A, surprised me and B, made me realise that when you're choosing golf clubs, there's far more to it than you might think. And in this case, just looking at loft alone might be just a little bit misleading. It seemed a simple enough task, got my bag from 5iron into hybrids and Ping's website made that decision for me. Or did it? I wanted to check for myself and don't be misled like I was. So there would have to be a starting point for me. And um, the five iron is 23.5 degrees aloft in this Ping G425 range. So I started hitting and collecting data with that uh, club. And I have to say it performs incredibly well. It is strong lofted for a five iron. So it's, uh, it's a fairly hefty number that we did in terms of carry. And I'll look at that data very, very shortly. I then wanted to put and pitch a barometer against that five iron. And I went into the four hybrid. The four hybrid at Ping is 22 degrees in its standard loft, but I cranked it up by a degree and a half to bring it up to 23 and a half. So effectively, from a loft perspective, we had two identical lofts. What would happen then in terms of the data and how would the ball get from A to B? Would it be exactly the same or would there be some differences? Well, if you have a look on screen now, you'll see the differences and they were maybe surprising. The interesting thing for me was just how far that 5-iron went uh, and how powerful these G425s are. And strong lofted is obviously an element of how far that ball is travelling. Uh, but you then compare that to the, uh, the data that you see on the G425. And what you will see is that um, there's a considerable difference, almost 10 yards of carry difference, far more spin on the hybrid, launch angle almost similar but real differences and variables that you'd want to consider where perhaps even you'd want to end at a six iron looking at that data and I'd go straight into the four hybrid as opposed to using that five iron. But they were the first differences that uh, surprised me a little and realized that tweaking this club or perhaps another, maybe a fairway wood was going to be needed to bridge that gap. So next up was to strengthen the loft and go the opposite end in terms of the four hybrid and see if we can get that club to gap in at around a sort of 205 carry. So we've got something to move on from the five iron. And this is what happened. Right, so next up, like I said, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna change this now from um, that one and a half degrees up. So we've got from 23, I'm gonna take it down one degree and turn it into what effectively would be a 21 degree hybrid. So we've now got two and a half degrees worth of difference between that and the five iron and see if we can bridge that gap. Can we get this up? It's a considerable jump forward, to be honest with you. You've seen from the numbers that it produced in terms of in that uh, 23 and a half degree setting, it was actually shorter than the five iron. So I wouldn't be surprised if this jumps up enough to make the difference that we're gonna need. A good solid ball. I don't think I can do much better than that. What do we get in terms of data? There you go. I mean, we've got one 198 carry by cranking this thing up into 21 degrees. So already we haven't got enough difference. Now let's a few more balls and see what happens, but that was pretty much as good as I've got. I'll be surprised if uh, I get much more out of that. I'd be worried I'd drop the other way in fact. So clearly already we've got now two and a half degrees worth of difference in terms of this four hybrid. And I'm worrying that this isn't the next jump up in the bag for me. Right, so what I'm going to tell you is this, uh, that didn't work and uh, even adding another degree, we were still only, it was surprising to be quite honest with you, the thing I learned that even though we were suggesting with that adjustability we're adding an extra degree or two and we ended up uh, with a degree and a half under, so what's that from 22, 19.5 and still wasn't getting enough dif distance to give me a gap between that five iron and into the hybrid. Right, so at this stage, I was a little confused. And when I go back to the beginning of the intro of the video, I said this uh, was not the planned video. The idea was to see how we could gap that bag from five iron into the hybrids, into the fairways. And when I checked out Ping's website, what I seen was that what they're suggesting, the equivalent hybrid and fairway would in relation to iron, it didn't really work out for me. I'm not saying that would be the same for everybody, but if you take a look at this chart in front of you now, a five iron is the equivalent to a five hybrid, four hybrid, four iron, three hybrid, three iron. That wasn't the case for me from the five iron testing. 
even when I strengthen the loft of the four hybrid up to 20.5 degrees, you still see I still can't get the gain that I needed to make that step up from five iron through to the next club in the bag. So it's really important for me, first of all, to point out, if I was buying online now based on looking at lofts and based on suggestions from Ping's own website, I wouldn't have had a difference in the bag. I would have had two clubs that did exactly the same thing. And that's a major error. So the next point was to see how we could get a gap and what club it required to find that gap. So it's gonna be, I'm moving in, I'm gonna try the seven wood. The seven wood standard loft at 20.5 degrees. But how does this now work? A bigger head, bigger mass, slightly longer shaft. Is that gonna give me the difference that I need in terms of that next club forward? And how much, again, this loft situation, how much impact and all the other variables that go into it, like I've just mentioned, size of head, length of shaft, are they the real things that make the difference in terms of the distance that I'm gonna go out there? We'll find out. Let's give it a whack while we're on camera. These are hit off the deck. We're not using a T-peg, but that's how the five iron was hit. It's almost a point where the five iron may be... That's solid again. I'm so impressed with the seven wood. It launches so high. It's an incredible ball flight, but let's have a look at the data on that one. We've got some difference there. So we've got a 206 carry that was. That's in this standard setting at 20.5. So don't forget, we started off with that five iron 196, if I remember rightly, in terms of that carry, a huge carry in terms of five iron. And as I just said, arguably just that little bit too long maybe. And uh, in this instance, for me on a personal level, I might even cut that at a six. But if I was gonna make that jump, we're going from a 23 and a half degree five iron and into a 20.5 degree seven iron. Right, so that's testing done three clubs. We've gone five iron, we've tried the hybrid in a number of different lofts, and then eventually went up to the seven wood. And I still don't think we've got a perfect gap in. I think we could probably tweak around just a little bit more and this video would go on forever. But for me, as it stood right now, it would very much look like we'd go from five iron into a seven wood or perhaps into a three hybrid, which would be the equivalent, as Ping suggested, to the three iron. So we've almost, as would be the seven wood, so we've almost skipped out that four iron completely. I'll just throw you these numbers up to confirm sort of what I'd collected in terms of averages and where it left us. Uh, the higher launching ball came from the iron, uh, which surprised me, considering again what you'd expect in terms of the CG placement. Ball speed 128, uh, peak height in 94, 191 carry on average and 4.4 spin. Really good numbers across the board for a five iron. But then like I said, in some ways it almost went too long because stepping up into the next set of numbers I collected was the hybrid and the hybrid cranked up to 20.5 degrees. So now we're three degrees stronger than what the five wood is, but the numbers were virtually identical. Um, slightly lower launching now at 12.6, but a peak height of 95. 134 ball speed crept up a bit off uh, that bigger mass. Um, 195 carry on average and 5.2 spin. So we gained what was like sort of four yards and nowhere near enough to gap as the next club up. And then as I say, we went to the seven wood, seven wood lofted at 20.5 degrees. Launched 12.2, peak height, it was the, um, in terms of where it got to 97 feet. 138 ball speed, again the faster ball speeds off the seven wood. Don't forget the longer shaft into that seven wood as would have been in the hybrid as well. We got to a 206 carry and 47 spin, so a really good number, but still we've got a jump now of 191 into 206. That's quite a bit of a leap, but I'm sure that a little bit of a tweak and maybe add a degree into that seven wood and you'd probably get a, a sort of a 10 yard average, which is what perhaps you'd look for. I thought this would have been a lot simpler a process when I was recording the video, very much for my own benefit, if you like, in terms of how to gap the bag. But the message, I think, from it all was, uh, it's not as simple and as straightforward as you always think. And like I said, looking at lofts as being, or, or the gap in lofts as being the way in which you gap your bag is not necessarily the case. And there are lots of other things that come into play. And in this case, like I said, starting off at the last club in the bag in terms of the irons, the five iron, was probably performing a lot better than perhaps uh, I would have expected it to, and therefore had that knock-on effect in terms of gapping into those next clubs in the bag. So, 
Interesting for me on a personal level and uh, I hope you got something from it. We went through a fair bit of testing to get this uh, data put together and as always the message would always be uh, where you can at least is to go and try and get custom fit and make sure you, uh, you, well, you make the adjustments and that's what this ping range does or any adjustability. Again the second part of the message would be buy hybrids and fairways that have adjustability in them because that's where you're going to uh, in the main get the best options to get that gap in right in the bag right as ever uh, thank you for watching we're getting settled in here we've still got a lot of work to do i keep saying that we're sort of uh, trying to do bits and then keep the videos going out at the same time but we're getting there uh, so hit that like button comments down below subscribe if you don't already and i'll see you all very soon